Hi everyone, welcome back to the Doge Academy and welcome back to introduction to programming using Java. So as you can see here, if we take a look at everything that we have done so far, we can definitely say that we have a lot of knowledge about programming already. And the topic that we are going to talk about now is basically one of the, is the last topic. There are two more topics that we are going to talk about, but basically we are reaching the end of this course. Since we already know how to work with loops, that is another thing that we need to learn. That's basically one of the foundations of the, the algorithm. Everything that I'm telling you here, everything that we saw so far, can be used in any programming language. The only thing that's different will be the, the syntax. So for loops, whiles, do whiles, variables, conditionals, in every programming language, high-level programming language, you will have the same thing, but it's just going to be written in a different way. And now we are going to talk about something that is also a foundation for algorithms. That's called arrays. First, let's just recap what we were doing. Remember, we had a memory. Oh, we still have a memory, I hope, because the computer is working. And then we have spaces in this memory. So imagine uh, the following. We have here a string, and then we would like to store a name. And then, as you can see here, we have string name, and we can put uh, something here. For example, we can put William. But then, let's say that you would like to store another name or something like a last name for a person. But let's say that you want to store another name. You know that you cannot declare two names and you would need to declare name two. And then uh, name two, you could have here someone that is a nice person, Goku. As you can see, imagine what happens if you want to create 10 names. You are going to create 10 distinct variables to store each one of those names. So as you can see, this is not scalable. And when we are talking about algorithms, we are talking about something that can be scaled, scalability, uh, readability, uh, maintainability, if that's a word, but uh, maintenance, easy of maintenance. And then we have to think about how can we actually store everything together? I would like just to use one reference variable here or one, um, type of variable to store all the names or maybe all the grades or to store multiple things like a set of things. This is called arrays and arrays is basically like this. You still have the memory, but instead of having like one space, what arrays is going to do is this. You are going to have one big space and inside this space, you will have different spaces. So let me try to have this here. So we have like one. And then you can say here that you have two and so on. So basically, as you can see, this can keep going on and you are going to have several spaces. So let's make it a little bit more simple and have only three spaces here because as you can see, the struggle is real. Okay. So let's say that this is an array. So you can imagine that this will keep going on. So I will just uh, shrink this. It didn't look good. Okay, so we have uh, four nice spaces here. Okay, I will move this out. So it will be a little bit easier for us to understand, but this is inside our memory. So this is just one space. This is not the, the memory itself. And it will be easier if I do something like this. So we have here one space. two, three, there you go. So these guys, they are inside a memory. Now, how do we have here a reference? Basically the reference is the same way as we were doing before, but the difference is that now we are going to have to specify this as something that will be an array. In Java, you open and close uh, brackets like this. So basically you can give a space here, so basically this is how to tell, okay, this whole thing right here is an array. So it's not just one tiny space, but it's everything here. So when we work with arrays, we are working with different spaces in memory. So we are saving here uh, names. So we can say again here, let me give here name. Let's say this is uh, Will. And then we have here Goku and we have here Gohan and we have here 
Boma. Okay, so we have all of this. If I ask, hey, how many names do I have in this array? How many names do I have stored in memory? Well, I have one, two, three, four. And I ask you, what's the size of this array? The size is one, two, three, four. So if someone asks you, what's the size of this array? The size is four. But this is where it gets a little bit complicated uh, for the first few times. The index, the way you access this array is not the same as the size. So you don't start counting one, two, three, four. As developers, you start counting zero, one, two, three. So to access a specific point in that array, you have to access through the index. So the index of the array, the position that you have in memory, because remember, you only have now one variable. Basically, the names is one variable, one reference that you are going to have in memory to more than one space. So the size is four, but the index will go up to three. So when I say, hey, William, uh, what's the, the position number two? What's the value of the name at position number two? If you count one, two, you would say Goku. But actually, when I say I would like to retrieve the value memory that's represented by the index two, it's zero, one, two. Actually, this is Gohan. So when I ask something like this to the, to the JVM, it's going to return Gohan. So what do you have to remember for this class? That array is just a space in memory where you are going to have little blocks inside. The size technically can be as big as the size of your memory. And inside of each one of these blocks, you can store data. What's the type of the data that you can store? The type of the data that you can store is the type of your variable that you declared. In this case, since we use the string, we can have names, but we can get the, the same array here. And instead of having names, we can have numbers. And then you could have something like this. Meaning that now you have a reference here to an array with four positions, meaning the index will go from zero to three. And now you can only store numbers because the type of this array is integer. The type of this array is string. So for now, just remember that arrays is just a space in memory where you can put data that is exactly the same type as you declared. And then the size will always be bigger than the maximum index by one. So you will have the size four, index three. If I delete here and I ask, hey, what's the size of this uh, array? And then you say, hey, the size of this array is three, one, two, three. And then the index will be zero, one, two. So if I want to say, hey, I would like you to return the number two. The number two is at index one. Okay, so um, that's it. Let's just stop for now. In the next video, we are going to see how uh, this can be applied in Java with algorithms. So I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.